Hidden Arsenal 4 was released on April 19th, 2011. This set would introduce one of the most powerful synchro monsters released to date, Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Additionally, the newest core set, Extreme Victory, was released on May 10th, 2011. Amongst the tools for both new and existing archetypes, a powerful new sneak peek promotional card would forever shift the competitive landscape in Reborn Tengu. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Well, folks, another episode of History of Yu-Gi-Oh! And wow, I mean, that last match. Who would have expected that I would uh, play uh, play those cards, you know? And I'm gonna be real with you. It's been about 15 days since we recorded an episode of History. I just wrapped a subathon and my brain is fried. But I woke up today and I'm not wearing the shirt of shame, so I must have done something right. It's the middle of 2011. In May, Orlando, Florida hosts a YCS, and the deck to beat is Six Samurai. Like last time, Konami officials are going around the floor asking players how they intend to beat Shien, but now people have much better answers. Some individuals are teching Neo Spatian Grand Mole. A couple of people have figured out that Six Samurai has a very critical weakness. They can't deal with defense position monsters with big booties, and as a result, they are playing cards like Spirit Reaper, which necessitate a hand search. Now that Six Samurai is a known quantity, people are prepared to defeat it. But Six Samurai isn't the only thing that people were prepared for. Another release threw this format into disarray thanks to a little card called Reborn Tengu. Now, Tengu took this event by storm, but I'll let Simo talk to you about the implications of that card in particular. I want to talk about some of the other stuff that topped. We are bringing this, Worms. Now, in this top 32, there were a ton of decks, but unfortunately, we've covered pretty much all of them. There were Tengu strategies, of course, but there was also Six Sam, X Saber, Gladiator Beast, Blackwing, and functionally none of these decks had been innovated since the last time we took a look at them. As a result, I'd like to focus on a deck that got 16th place and unfortunately lost a top 8 match to Gladiator Beast, a deck it was not metagamed against. This is Worms. Now, Worms are an archetype that was released in Hidden Arsenal, and they were expected to be very good. People around were playing with them. Their gimmick is that they have one monster for every letter of the alphabet. Now, mostly these monsters are terrible, but a couple of them, particularly Worm Zex, which represents X, and Worm Yagan, which represents Y, are extremely strong. Zex on normal summon can send a reptile-type worm from your deck to the graveyard, and if you control a Y, it can't be destroyed by battle. And Yagan, if it's in your graveyard, can be special summoned in face-down defense position, and if that happens, is removed from play when it leaves the field. When it's flipped, you can bounce a monster your opponent controls. This one-card setup was backed up by some of the most powerful trap cards ever printed in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's analogous to modern guru strategies, but the most important of them is this one, W Nebula Meteorite. This is the earliest example of modern Yu-Gi-Oh! card design I can find. It is functionally a trap card that says if you are dumb enough to bring worms to an event, you deserve to win. And this card wins you the game. It flips all face-down monsters on the field into face-up defense position, allowing you to proc your worm Yagan on your opponent's turn. Then, during the end phase, you flip all face-up light-type reptile monsters you control to face-down defense, draw a card for each, which is usually two, then you can special summon one level 7 or higher reptile type monster from your deck, and the target is Worm King, which is a really, really good Gravekeeper's Descendant. This is an extremely self-contained strategy, and it got to make use of some really impressively powerful cards and Floodgates. The side deck is heavily metagamed to beat exactly 6 Samurai and Tengu Plant, and... Unfortunately, its matchup versus Gladiator Beast in the top 8 decider went about exactly as you would expect. This deck topped this event 
then nothing ever again until 2014 when Zex and Yagan were used as a rank 4 engine for early Xyz. So, let's go through the individual cards. We've got two copies of Evil Dragon Anata. This is a really interesting card that I'm glad we have gotten to see, finally. Uh, it's one of the jankiest boss monsters I've ever seen in my life. You have to banish all reptiles from your graveyard to summon it, and it gets attack equal to the number of banished reptiles times 600. Then at the end phase, you target a card on the field and destroy that target. That's mandatory, so if you're in a position where you're winning and trying to close out a game, things might go south. We're playing a copy of Gen X Ally Birdman, uh, pretty much everyone was, but this deck allows you to do some really funny things with it. You can bounce your own Worm Zex after your Yagan is spent, the Birdman goes to the graveyard, and next turn you can set it up again. You can make use of a 7-star Synchro that is uniquely good in this deck, which we'll get to in a second, and uh, there are of course lines for Black Rose and the like. We're playing a copy of Honest, three copies of Worm Carteros. This card searches a Worm Monster, it seems very good, but unfortunately it's not good if your opponent just refuses to attack it because you have to to only control the Worm Zex in order to summon the Yagan from the graveyard, so a little bit of mind games there. Two King, three Zex, three Yagan, one Book of Moon, a Dark Hole, a Monster Reborn, double Mystical Space Typhoon, and triple Duality. We've got two Bottomless Trap Hole, Triple Dimensional Prison, Mirror Force, Offerings to the Snake Deity is Icarus Attack, but for Reptiles, Royal Oppression, double Seven Tools of the Bandit, you really, really did not want your Worm Zex to be Solemn Warninged, Solemn Judgment, double Warning, and triple W Nebula Meteorite. In the side, we've got two copies of Cypher Soldier, two copies of Cyber Dragon, two copies of Jaguin the Spiritualist, two copies of Nobleman of Crossout, a Super Polymerization to make Worm Zero in the Mirror, two Chain Disappearance, two Chain Whirlwind, and two Rivalry of Warlords. In the extra, of course, we have the Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon that was standard during this period, Worm Zero, some Sevens, an Ancient Fairy Dragon, Black Rose Dragon, and this card, Gen X Ally Triforce. So this card can only be made with a Gen X tuner, but it gets effects based on the attribute of the other monster used to synchro, and for light, you get to special summon a monster from your graveyard in face-down defense position. Now, Yagan banishes itself when it's left the field after it's been summoned by its own effect, but sometimes you can get a second one into rotation by doing this. At minimum, you can probably recycle a Carteros, which sets you up for a future turn. We're also playing a copy of Brianak, a copy of Colossal Fighter, a Gaia Knight, a Scrap Archfiend, a Scrap Dragon, and a Stardust Dragon. Realistically, it's unlikely you would ever make any of these, but some weird scenarios where you reborn an opponent's tuner may come up. So in conclusion, this is one of the first examples of a modern Yu-Gi-Oh! control deck. Really powerful traps, backed up by singular one-card advantage engines, and individual cards that put you way over the top like W Nebula Meteorite. It is exceptionally metagamed and teched to heck, so I hope that we'll be able to beat Alex's decidedly meta strategy with ours. You know, last episode didn't really go as planned. I thought I would get my retribution against Joseph by playing six Sams, and that just did not go any bit how I wanted to. However, we are now moving on to May of 2011, and two very significant things occur at this time. The first of which is the fact that Reborn Tengu is released, and this card changes the metagame for the foreseeable future. If you've never seen this card before, it is absurd. If this face-up card leaves the field, special summon one Reborn Tengu from your deck. Leaves the field is a clause that we don't see too often in Yu-Gi-Oh! And for good reason, because it is absolutely broken, especially when it's on a level four that actually has a decent stat line as well. The second thing to happen at this time was the release of Hidden Arsenal 4. And in that set, comes the one and only Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier. This is one of the strongest synchro monsters ever printed, and I'm hoping to show this off in today's episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! So we're going to be bringing Plant Synchro or Tengu Plant, there's a bunch of different variations of what you can call this deck, to today's episode. And I'm excited. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. This is Juan Morales' second place list from YCS Orlando in 2011. It has some different spicy texts in here, and so we'll go ahead and discuss them as we do the card by card. So we have a card trooper, a chaos sorcerer. He was actually only playing one of this, although I think it's semi-limited because him and his uh, friends were feeling that this card actually bricked quite a bit. So they actually aren't maxing out on this. There's not a ton of lights you can go into to be able to get this off rather consistently. Dandelion, double debris dragon, double effect veiler, and three copies of Gen X ally Birdman. Birdman, as you can see, is a card that is limited and for good reason, because in tandem with a card like Reborn Tengu, this actually creates a very interesting loop. What you can do is you can just 
just take Tengu, bounce it back to your hand to actually fulfill the condition to summon Gen X ally Birdman, which is to return a face-up monster you control to the hand, special summon it, and then because Reborn Tengu left the field, that's all it has to do, you get the special one from your deck, and because Birdman is a tuner, you are then able to go into a level 7 synchro. So you can Black Rose the field, you can go to a Scrap Arch Fiend for damage. This combo is just nasty and is part of the reason why both this card and Tengu eventually find their way on the limited list in some form. We've also got a Glow Up Bulb, a Gores, and we have a little Gravekeeper package here. This was actually a check against the Gravekeeper decks because being able to just have Spies and Descendant at your disposal means that it's harder for the Gravekeeper decks to be able to break through, but also, once again, you have a lot of cool synergies with a card such as Birdman because you can flip up the Spy, grab another copy of Spy, bounce one back to your hand with the Birdman, you have a level 7 Synchro play right there, and you still haven't even committed to a normal summon at that point, so that's a lot of value that you can get just off of these two cards as well. We've got two Junk Synchron just to be able to further facilitate some Synchro plays, a copy of Lila Lightsworn Sorcerers to pave the way, taking out stuff like Solemn Judgment, Solemn Warning, and the like, a Plague Spreader Zombie, Triple Reborn Tengu, of course, Double Raiko, and a copy of Unknown Synchron. This is a card that says if only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. This is basically just a Cyber Dragon, but in the form of a level one tuner, which gives you access to potentially going into Trishula, because if you're able to summon out multiple spies or multiple other level fours, you've got some really cool synergy there. That's it for the monsters, though. For the spells, Book of Moon, Dark Hole, Mind Control, Monster Reborn, Double Mystical Space Typhoon, a one for one, Double Pot of Avarice, and Triple Pot of Duality, and then the traps, a Solemn Judgment, and two copies of Solemn Warning. The extra deck has a few interesting cards, I would say, because Double Arcanite Magician was not standard at the time. This is able to be achieved solely because of the little package here of Gravekeeper, Spy, and Descendant. Because these are spellcasters, you can actually sink into this as one of your Synchro 7s of choice to be able to start popping cards on the field. I think that's pretty awesome. Same goes for the Double Black Rose. I don't know how this was ever at more than one. This card just seems insane. We have Brianak, we have Formula, we have Frozen Fitzgerald in here as well. I guess this can come up because we do have some monsters in the form of a non tuner beast like Raiko, Lightsworn Hunter. This card's actually interesting. If this card attacks, your opponent can activate spells or trap until the end of the damage step, and when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to grave, while you control no monsters, you can discard a card to special summon this card in face-up defense position. It's nice because you can get stuff into the graveyard as well. We've got Iron Chain, Scrap Archfiend, which is just a big 2700 vanilla, but that's pretty nice. Scrap Dragon, Double Stardust, and Double Trishula because it is not yet limited. And then for the side deck, the side deck plan is interesting because going up against the mirror match, we have so many cards that can do just wonders. We've got Triple Banisher of the Radiance, Triple DD Warrior Lady, Double Fossil Dina, Double Bottomless, Double Dimensional Prison, a Malevolent Catastrophe for the back row decks, Mirror Force, and Royal Oppression. This is going to be a really fun match. I can't wait to see how it's going to play out. I know Joseph is playing some absolute jank, but to be fair, we've kind of showed off a lot of the other decks up until this point, and so it'll be nice to see something else that did rather well for the time. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to do it. Joseph, here we are once again in the post subathon aftermath and going by your sleeves here, you must be exhausted. 11 long days. I think this will be going up like 11 days after the subathon concluded. Congratulations, buddy. How are you feeling? How does it feel to be back? I'm feeling good. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I am actually completely taken aback by the uh, the generosity of, uh, of the community. I, I really want to thank everyone for coming out. I will return to my channel refreshed and restored before this comes up, so there's no reason for me to be talking about it now, I am absolutely ready to make my first post subathon action clapping you in this best of three. Yeah, of course. And I figured there'd be no better way to invigorate that passion of yours than to play worms of all things. I don't know why I let you talk me into this, but I'm yeah. sure the fans will appreciate it. And I'm sure we will also revisit this in history of jank once more with me playing a more janky option as well. It's uh, it's surprising. Worms was expected to be a pretty good deck and it did perform at least at the local and regional level. But in terms of YCSs, it tops once now and then a couple of times in 2014 when it's used as a rank four engine never again uh, nope. it turns out never zex again. and yagan are not good enough but they just might be good enough for an untuned unfinished version of plant synchro that you're repping and to be fair i think people would rather watch this than see blackwing gladiator beast or x saber one more episode so buddy <laughs> let's go ahead and get into it i'm gonna go ahead and uh pick a number a uh, even or odd if you want to go ahead and throw the fingers up for me uh, let me think. 
Okay, I have a number written on this piece of paper. Okay, I'm gonna go with even. It is odd. The, Ooh, okay. yeah, I wrote down a 25 for the 25th letter of the alphabet. Y. Why? All right. Flipping that Y on you all day. I bet you are, buddy. I bet you are. Good luck. You get to go first, which is exactly what you want to be doing. And let's see how this one goes. Wow. I mean, this is. Oh, wow. <laughs> this yeah. is. Calm down, buddy. You're getting too excited over there. Oh, did you think this was excitement? It was something else. Okay, four back row, anyone's game. Uh, I'll draw, what you got in standby for me? Nothing, I got nothing. All right, well, let's go ahead and lead with the best card in the format, Reborn Tengu. <laughs> Shit, I think I actually have to solemn warning this. Oh, okay. I don't have so a convincing out to three copies of a monster. Tengu is down. Uh, now, I'm going to ask this, but I'm pretty sure I know the answer. Tengu was never technically on the field because you negated the summon. So I imagine I don't get a summon here, correct? That is correct, but I am I am checking it right now. This is the number <laughs> one thing we don't want to screw up. Okay, so after uh, perusing the old depths of Pojo forums, we have confirmed that, yeah, it's not going to trigger here. Thankfully, it's going to be a one-for-one one instead of the usual one four three that Tangu represents. I also love that Tangu just has seventeen hundred attack. It's you know, so like much. this card could this card could have had zero attack and it still would have seen the same amount of play. Yeah, that like it people did. played uh, Pet in the Dark Clown and that was a Tangu yeah. that missed timing and <laughs> attack for nothing. <laughs> It wasn't dark, though. That does matter. Uh, I will go ahead and set a card. I'll just throw it over to you, buddy. <laughs> oh, boy. Stand by main. Um, All good. Wow. I am lost. Uh, I think <laughs> that... Wow. Oh, I'm going to normal summon Honest. Yeah, sure. And I'm going to attack. I'll take 11. Would you like to bounce Honest back to your hand in main, too? Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, you're good to go. <laughs> that could matter. Uh, I'll go ahead and draw. Let's go to main phase one. Well... Uh, as much as I would love to just keep taking pot shots from Honest, I'm just going to go ahead and set one and throw it to you. Sure. I'll draw for turn. Stand by me. So let's begin with a copy of Mystical Space Typhoon targeting your back row. That was my solemn warning. Very good news. I don't have a fantastic way to do this, but this is probably good enough. This is a huge punish if your set card is Tengu or Dandelion. It's a huge W if it's something like a Raikou. So I'm going to fire off a Dark Hole here. Ooh, it was Spy. Oh, so even better. I, I, I would put that in the Raikou department. All right, we're going to normal summon a Worm Zex and trigger the effect. Here we go. So this card allows you to just go ahead and send a Reptile from deck to grave. So it's this is one of the very for worms. first one card combos. Uh, we're going to activate the effect of Worm Yagan in Graveyard because the only monster I control is Worm Zex. I can special summon this card in face down defense position. Now, when this card is removed from the field, it's going to be banished, so I can't just do this infinitely. And then when it's flip summoned, I get to target a face up monster you control and return it to the hand. I am going to go to combat and I will attack directly with Zex. And that'll be 1800 to the dome. All right. Uh, then I'm going to go to main phase two. God, this really sucks when you can't overlay immediately afterwards. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are good to go. Okay, I will draw. Anything in standby? Nothing in standby. Okay, let's go to main phase one then. Uh, got a couple plays I can do here. I'm going to go ahead and try this one. I'm going to activate mind control. I'm going to target your Zex. That's very interesting. Well, it can't be tributed. Yeah, you can have the Zex. Okay, I will go ahead and take him. And I'm going to normal summon Gen X ally Birdman. <laughs> Sick, I get to do this. Uh, I'm going to activate W Nebula Meteorite. There it is, baby. All right, so let's go ahead and explain this card. Because, Joseph, when I first saw this card, I thought this is one of the craziest cards imaginable. <laughs> it, it is absolutely bonkers. So W Nebula Meteorite is a card that says win the game. I famously thought that this was the best thing you could be doing with Trap Trick when Trap Trick was first released to give you an example of how strong this card was for so long. So it's going to flip every face down monster on the field to face up defense position, and that's going to include my Worm Yagan, which will trigger once this effect is resolved. During the end phase of this turn, I'm going to change every face up light reptile type monster I control to face down defense position. Then I'm going to draw a single card for each one. And then after Nuts. that has resolved, I will special summon a level seven or higher reptile type monster from my deck. I'm thinking what I'm going to do here. Uh, I think that 
Birdman is probably the return. What's the punish here? You used your normal on Birdman, right? Correct. It would have to be exactly a reborn. But if it's a reborn, I don't really care. You're then getting rid of the Zex. I could return the Zex to the hand and then I could have it. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and return uh, my own copy of Worm Zex to the hand. That makes sense. I mean, you just get a follow up for next turn. Okay, uh, now I must think because I'm gonna have to deal with the potential for meteorites to resolve in the end phase. Well, it's gonna resolve in the end phase. So the question is, how do we best navigate that? Yeah, I suppose I'll activate Reborn. I knew it. All right, no big deal. All right, I'll bring back Tengu. Mm -hmm. Any response? Nope. I guess I will sink both of these off and let's go ahead and grab ourselves. Uh, what do we want to get here? I guess Black Rose is cool, but like you only have two cards. So like, I don't know if that's very good. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to go for the Black Rose. Okay, that's unfortunate. Black Rose Dragon is an optional effect and Reborn Tengu is a mandatory effect. Can you hazard a guess as to how this chain is going to resolve? Yes, it's going to be Chain Link 1 Tengu, Chain Link 2 Black Rose. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll send our Yagan to the graveyard in that case uh, alongside a seven tools of the bandit. Yeah, Ooh, let's make sure to okay. banish him as well. Uh, then that will resolve. Black Rose is gone. I get to trigger the Tengu, so I can go ahead and grab myself another one here, which isn't too bad. And I guess that's going to be it for me in that front. I'll hit for 17. Uh, and then second main, I think I'm just going to pass it over to you, buddy. We have the end phase for the meteorite here. We don't. If I'm not Ooh. able to switch a monster back face down, I can't summon a level seven or higher from my deck. I see. Okay. Well, then that worked out perfectly for me. You do have a Zex, though, so you can just get set up here again. Yeah, I'm trying to think if that was the right play. If I had Yagand your Gen X ally Birdman and you had reborn, you could return your own Tengu to the hand and it would trigger twice. You'd be down one further Tengu, but I'd have no follow-up, so uh, it's fine. I'll go to main phase. Can I kill you? You've got one more Tengu in rotation. Shit. That's frustrating. Oh, this Honest is putting in a lot of work, I'll tell you that. I do remember you have that, and that does give you a potential way to kill me, I suppose, but I, I, I don't exactly feel like this is the deck that's going to be dishing out that much damage. I think I want to keep you off of any possible monster. Uh, so I'm going to normal summon the Worm uh, Zex. I'll trigger the effect. Sure. Once again, we're going to send a Worm again to the graveyard. Uh, we will trigger the effect uh, in order to summon it in defense. Someday that's going to be a really re relevant compulse. <laughs> One day. <laughs> and I am actually going to... Ooh, looking in the extra deck. What are you up to over there? You have a reborn of your own? I've got a plan. You you thought you could lethal me, so I figure there has to be some special summoning going on here. All right, all right. Yes, there's a monster. Yeah, reborn. there it is. All right, what are you grabbing? I've got two options here. I've got Birdman. I've got some seven plays of my own. Pretty much every deck uh, during this format was playing Birdman. Uh, but I think I just want the Black Rose. It's just like a big asshole, right? It's big. Sure. Take him. All right, let's go to combat. I'm going to go Black Rose into the Tengu. All right, so I'll take seven and I'll get another Tengu. I hate this. I hate this so much. You would be 100% dead. And, you know, big surprise. We'll walk into that Tengu as well. Sure. And I'm out of Tengus. Congratulations. If I hit end turn and then you activate Avarice, I will sob. Go ahead. Okay, I'll draw. I will Avarice. Oh! <laughs> Let's do it again, buddy. Yeah, fine, okay. just, Put them all back. Put them all back. Three tengu. Uh, yeah, see, yeah, yeah. But see, Joseph, now there's a chance that I can draw two Tengu off yeah, of the pot. Yeah, oh, so, oh yeah. yeah. Actually, this is completely fine. And now we are seeing one of the many reasons why Tengu was a crazy good card. All right. We'll go ahead and draw two here if I actually know how to use Dueling Book correctly. And oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and fire Pot of Duality next. Well, there's a bird, man. Uh, hmm. This is a weird decision. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Dandy's the pick. Yeah, I think that's probably right. It's, it, it's tough. I don't know. But the way my hand is, it's it's hard to say for sure. Okay. Uh, next, I'm in a dark hole. Yeah, that's pretty good. And you had your own dark hole, so I don't want to hear it. You've dark hole twice, there. Mr. Black Rose Dragon. <laughs> Uh, your point, sir. Anyway, uh, I will go ahead and I, I guess I'll just set one and I will Man. throw it to you. Would you like to normal the third Zex? Oh, never mind. No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, we'll go to main one. Now, this could be a third Yagen or it's also there's the 
is it Kateros? I don't remember how to pronounce it, but that one, I think when it's flipped, you just get to search or like yeah. special or something like that. Uh, Carteros adds from deck to hand, but only- oh, Okay, so he just wrote us. Yeah. Okay. So I want to try to play around both of those as best I can. I don't know if I'm able to though. All right, I'm gonna duality here again. Sure. Oh, there's the boy. He's back once again. Uh, Let's go ahead and grab ourselves the Tengu. Sick. Shouldn't be much of a surprise. Uh, now, unfortunately, can't really do much here. I guess I'll run out the Tengu, and I'll just hit your set. If it's Yagen, it's Yagen. It's Yagen. Oh, thank goodness. There it is. I'm back in the hand. Back to hand he goes. Duality boy. And I'll pass. Go ahead. What the hell am I supposed to do against uh, your monster, however? I don't know. We'll just get in for uh, nothing. Uh, sure. It's Dandy. I'll get yep. the tokens. Go ahead. Setting one in each zone. I don't think you would set honest. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, we'll go to main one. I'll bring out Tengu. Yeah, no response here. I'll try to hit into your Yagen. Ugh, man. It's not even like once per turn. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll take seven here. And I'm just chilling, buddy. Go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna flip summon Carteros and trigger sure. the effect. That is uh, two in hand. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'll Valor it. Yeah, we're uh. not gonna let you get to the Zex. Okay, I actually drew the Zex. Oh, fine. Uh, I will trigger it. Yep, sure. We're gonna send a Carteros to the graveyard. Out of Yagen's, but you do get to get a Carteros. My. Oh, no, that's only. Yagen doesn't summon. <laughs> Yagen only summons itself. Never mind. <laughs> the inner machinations of my win condition are an enigma. Ugh, God, I can run you out of Tangus, but that does dick fuck nothing. Uh, I'll just go into the two tokens here. All right, back to you, buddy. All right, uh, we'll draw. That's pretty good. I will go ahead and normal summon Birdman. Now I could just go straight to Black Rose here. That does lose to a potential warning that you could have set, but I still get a Tengu anyway. So do I really care? Uh, not really, I'm just gonna go for it. Black Rose number two. Let's see the warning. What? This card is no longer a one. Oh yeah, it's a two now, buddy. <laughs> well, it's definitely worth bottomlessing to keep you off uh cycling them both for avarice but uh still sucks ass yeah sure okay so black rose resolves everything's gonna die tengu's gonna trigger i'm gonna go ahead and get another one out of the deck oh this is so oppressive we'll hit for 17 it's so fun isn't it buddy i'm having a blast go ahead i have outs there's stuff in my deck that wins but very few and far between Ooh, that is not one of them <laughs> That could be anything I've set. Okay, it could be anything, yeah. Uh, unfortunately for you, Honest has a big ass, yeah, so yeah. I do have to find a way around that. Now, as much as I would love to just have a third Black Rose, that would solve my problems, but not really. All right, I'm gonna one for one here. That's interesting. Sure. Uh, thinking what to send for cost. I think I'm going to send this Junk Synchron. And let's go grab everyone's favorite level one tuner, Glow Up Bulb. There he is. And I guess we'll sync off here. Okay. Go for a Cataster. That's a good one. And I'll try to hit. Okay, I have a Dimensional Prison. Ooh, okay. Well, that did it. Uh, I will throw to you. You drew the last Tengu. That's unfortunate for you. Unfortunately, yes. It was right after uh, the turn that I got the Tengus back in my deck. Off and of the I drew the best card in my deck. Oh, oh okay. God. Okay. Oh, All right. Ooh. three killers. Oh my gosh. I have to think about this one. I was going to say, this is interesting. Obviously, warning's worthless. Oppression puts me off of potentially getting something big enough to hit over Honest, and Birdman actually gives you access to Synchro plays. So. Yeah, but it's not for a turn, and I know you're going to summon the Tengu. But it's not like the Tengu can kill the Honest. It's certainly not warning since I'm at 1,900. Now we can just put that back now. Oppression versus Birdman. We have a Zex remaining in the deck. We have a Kataros remaining in the deck. We've got some, like, general good stuff, too. Do I trust myself to find that good stuff before you try and special summon four times? Yeah, I think I do. No, I'm I'm being bad. Like, <laughs> the, the top of your deck is so much better than the top of my deck. I think I'm taking Birdman here. Um, the top of your deck is just so much better than the top of mine. And pretty much everything I have that still wins the game requires a special summon, and you have a million life points. So now I will flip summon Honest, go to combat, get in for 11. Take the 11. Uh, second main, I will return it to the hand. Then I will set one card, could be anything, and you are gonna- Could be anything. 
All right, I will draw. Uh, let's go to main one. Uh, that is honest. So what do we do about it? Uh, probably nothing. I'm being honest. Ha ha! Ha ha! And honest, 1900 defense. It's kind of a problem. Uh, I'm gonna normal summon Tengu. Yo, that's so shocking. Yep. Right. I know. I'm gonna set one and pass. I'll draw. Oh, well, that's very interesting. Uh, we'll go standby main. Don't like to hear that, but sure. Oh, he's looking in the graveyard. Oh, no. I'm going to normal summon Birdman. Do you have a response? No, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to flip summon Honest. Sure. All right, this is fucking sick. Check this out. So okay. uh, Gen X ally Birdman is the greatest card ever printed. Um, <laughs> But <laughs> it... uh. It also enables a really cool synchro monster. So I'm gonna send these two to the grave and summon Gen X ally Triforce. What the fuck is this? Triforce. I don't think I've ever seen this card in my life. So uh, with priority, I will be activating its effect. This allows me to select a light monster in my graveyard and special summon it in face down defense position. It gets different effects based on the type of monster used for its summon. Oh, that's pretty sick. Uh, sucks I have a warning, so you Damn. won't be doing <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my god, it sucks. For you, you have a warning, dipshit! The last card in my hand is a card that many do not know. Shut up! No way! It's the one, <laughs> the only, evil dragon, <laughs> Anatana, with exactly 3,000 attack! Attack my evil dragon! <laughs> Cleanse Simo's life points! <laughs> No way! Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't. Yes! I think what's so funny about what just happened is that right before we started filming, Joseph, you explicitly told me. There's no way this card is real, right? There is no way Evil Dragon Anatod or whatever the hell it's called is a worthwhile inclusion. And there you go, buddy. It just Bobby won you again. <laughs> It, it's so bad, but also it has 3,000 attack. And, you know, Blue Eyes is all right sometimes. Oh, my God. In a simplified game state, when you and I are on one card apiece, yeah, I hear that's pretty okay. Uh, I will go ahead and start, though. Hopefully, oh, Jesus, maybe this is not going to be good. Uh, I'll go ahead and go to main one. I'm going to set a pair and pass to you. All right, I'll draw. Ooh, stand by main. Let's go, uh, Sidra. Uh... That's a card. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know. Uh, combat. I will have my dandelion fall and get myself two fluffs. Sure. All right, check this shit out. All back row. All back row, baby. Let's go. Honest in hand, too. Oh, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> All right. I will go to main one. Uh, let's go ahead and give this a shot. I am going to normal summon unknown synchro. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. This card is a machine. <laughs> it is a machine. Uh, fuck. Well, that's a thing. Well, I guess I'm sending that to the graveyard <laughs> instead of taking 2100 to the face. I don't know. Um, I'll set one and pass. I'm good. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Rivalry of Warlords is both players? Correct. Hmm. All right, Cyber Dragon, bring me to victory. <laughs> one token down. All right, uh, I will see you in two turns, buddy. We'll draw. Oh, perfect. That That's just exactly what I wanted. Uh, fucking rivalry. Go ahead. Token down. You are now free from my curse. I am, but to what end exactly? <laughs> because this deck requires usually more than one card to function. <laughs> I will set one and pass. I'm going to keep doing it. Oh. I bet God. you are. Birdman down. Damn. All right, go ahead. Draw. Uh, there's a duality. Oh, come on. No MST. Let's go. Uh, that's that's not an MST. <sighs> it's not an MST. Man, I would kill for a Necro Valley right now. Uh, I guess I'll take the Valor. Sure. <clears throat> Shuffle these back. Uh, I guess I'm just setting and passing. Uh, this is Mystic Mind, but 2011 edition. Oh. 
Combat. Wow. There goes the Baylor. <laughs> oh, that was fun. All right, go ahead. We'll draw. Uh, uh, all right, I'm going to MST your rivalry. We did it. Uh, unfortunately, late I than do never. not have anything to do about this. Uh, until I do something and actually commit, then you will. I will normal summon Debris Dragon. Yeah, uh, that is fine. I will target Dandelion. Also fine. I will sync up. Show me the bla uh, warning. Don't have the warning. Uh, I'll go for the bottomless here. Uh, okay. Wow, that's awful. Offerings. I, w. I can't believe that actually <laughs> worked. All right. Jeez. Cool. MST is uh, limited, right? Uh, MST is at two in this format? Yeah. I don't remember. All right. You want to get those tokens? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to get the tokens from Dandelion. And now the question is, what else do I want to do? I already normal summoned. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll Avarice. Oh, I guess. Oh, I just... I've got I five. suppose, you know. I suppose. <sighs> Shuffle them up. We'll draw two. That's eh, fine. Uh, I'll just set one and pass. Go ahead. Uh, stand by main. Yep. Okay, that's MST. That set card. It was warning. You're two for two. Sick. Sex. Zex is good. Ooh, you again. He's coming. Uh, Shortcutting here. Whoop. Goes to grave, special, and pace down defense. We'll get one. One down. Whoop. Back to you. See if we can do anything about it. Uh, Main one. Yep. I will normal glow up bulb. You're going to synchro into the formula to try and draw your way out of this. I will W Nebula Meteor right here. Yep. All right. Well, Go ahead. And to put that boy back in your hand. Okay. He is back. Oh, uh, that's a problem. Anything I can do about it? Uh, I can duality. Sure. I've not special summoned. Now the problem with meteorite is that he flips all of your reptiles down, not just one. I only have to hit one in order to summon. Mm-hmm. And then we have to deal with the big bad worm king himself. Fuck, that meteorite's gonna resolve. Oh yeah. Nothing I can do. It's coming, baby. You get to draw two and you're gonna get the worm king. Like that is so stupid. Whoa, like, whoa, what whoa. a fucking What card. if I draw the worm king? You know, buddy, if you draw the worm king, you draw the worm king. Problem is how do I even deal with worm king? That's like a whole nother issue. <laughs> He's the boy. He is a boy. Yeah, I'll take trooper. Sure. It's fine. Uh, I already normaled, so that's unfortunate. I'm just passing here. All right, back down they go. And let's draw two. Not Worm King. Not Worm King. All right. And then let's go get Worm King. Getting the boy. Uh, so this deck was playing two of them, and I boarded out of one because I think that that's very stupid that they're playing two of them. I don't respect it. All right. Uh, I'll draw for turn. <laughs> Did you just draw the second one? <laughs> no, this is an okay draw. All right. You gain. I'm gonna oh, no, no. Card. You boarded it out. You boarded it out. Uh, token gone. Yep. Oh, what are you at? 8,000? 8K. Can uh, you kill me? I, I think I can. Uh... Wow. Okay, give me a sec there. Oh, sure. So you have uh, 55 already on field. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to Monster Reborn targeting my Cyber Dragon. Oh, well, that's a way to get a lot more damage on the field. Yeah, that works. Uh, I'm going to Gen X Ally Birdman, uh, putting the Zex back in hand. Oh, that's broken. And yep. I'll normal the Zex. Uh, I will send a Yagan and proceed to the battle phase. We're good. Uh, a thousand. Yep. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. Twenty-one. And, and I have to gores here, wow. otherwise I'm dead. We're we're moving. There's still some game to play. There is. Uh, I'll get my token. Token can summon in defense. Uh, we'll attack Correct. with the Worm King into that. Yep. Token down. All right. Second main. We're going to trigger Worm King. Uh, we're gonna banish our Worm Yagan to pop your gores. It's just crazy that this thing like also has a good effect. <laughs> right? That's unbelievable. We are going to go Birdman and Zex to the grave to make a seven. Uh, we're going to make, make your Triforce. We will make Triforce. Um, we will trigger the effect targeting our Yagan. Sure. I will set one. And hell, you're good to go, buddy. All right. Don't know how we're getting out of this. Uh, I will draw, though. In one. Good Lord. I will normal summon Card Trooper. No response. I will activate the effect. Yeah, that's fine. Mill three and hope for the best. Uh, I will banish a light and a dark. Okay. For Chaos Orc. And uh, I drew a royal oppression off of my meteorite. Fantastic. Uh, we were never winning this game. Okay. Uh, there is one hope I still have. I'm going to go to battle. Yep. 
I'm going to attack into your cyber dragon with my card trooper. Oh, I see what you mean. I am not even going to allow that. I will nebula meteorite. Oh, no respect. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Yagen's going to bounce us back to hand. I don't take any damage, and I'm just dead anyway. Oh, wow. wow. That was... That was a wasn't game. wasn't Dark Hole anyway. Holy that was shit. a game. That was very fun. I think we got to show off uh, a few things. I think we got to show off like how relevant this deck actually was. I mean, it's very repeatable, the Zex Yagen thing. Yeah. But once you get going, like this deck really just starts to get out of hand very quickly. Almost reminds me of uh, modern day uh, just like control decks, like almost like Guru and the like, you know, like you're not really like generating a ton of advantage, but you're really just keeping them off with the Yagen. But mm -hmm. then the Meteorite is really what's getting you the cards in the end. Um, and then my deck, I mean, yeah. not this uh, game specifically, but we got to see Tengu just what a force in the format for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I would say like a, a less recent analog to Worm would be like, uh, I don't know, um, Dino Rabbit kind of does the same kind of stuff, like set a whole bunch of cards and then a one card starter. Um, right. That second game, actually, I special the Sidra, set five, and I drew the Zex off the top and I was like, Oh, I actually need Alex to break my rivalry because I can't win. <laughs> uh, if you had kept Machine with the Dandy tokens, you could have fused your unknown Synchron with my Cyber Dragon to make a Chimera Tech. And I was like, I hope he figures that out because that's the only way I out my own lock here. So it's funny, this extra deck was not playing Chimera oh, Tech. No, so I wasn't mistake. able to do that. <laughs> yeah, that did cross my mind, but unfortunately, no, I wasn't able to. The The issue was, so I had that bottomless set for your Sidra, uh -huh. but I wanted to hold out for the Zex oh, because yeah. Yagen can't trigger, I believe, unless, unless you, you control Zex. Zex. Yeah. Correct. So I was thinking, okay, Sidra hits my dandelion, whatever. I was thinking you already had the Zex, you're going to summon it, just get set up there. So I was holding it for that. And if I didn't set the second one, uh, I guess I didn't know I was going to draw MST for your rivalry. I could have had like one defensive card for when I uh, black rose after all that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I mean, that was that was a that was a bit an iffy one for sure. I yeah. the, the decision point for me, too, that I'm questioning when I avarice when I had the chaos sork in hand, because I had light dark. Oh, I see. What uh, you mean. And I could have kept, uh, if I didn't Avarice, I could have potentially Chaos Sorked you, but I think I just had the two tokens and really nothing else. I think I drew into that warning, which ended up just getting MST'd for all the good that did. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, I definitely think there were some different decisions I could have made, but the rivalry was, uh, that was hard to, to break. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know what else I was <laughs> supposed to do there. Floodgates, very fun. No, the uh, Very fun. the list of cards available to Worms is actually pretty staggering. They have an Icarus attack, you know, they have a one card yeah. setup. Uh, they have rivalry locks. Uh, Worm King is crazy. It's an unbelievably yeah. powerful card. Um, mm -hmm. But the story of this format was uh, the story of Tengu Plant. It's like the first time that Tengu Plant really got a chance to shine. And uh, boy, it, it was extremely powerful. You saw in game one, uh, just looping the Avarices and the Tengus felt absolutely unbreakable. And minus a huge haymaker like Antra, there was... Or an, 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 an anta, there was literally no way I was uh, taking that one. I mean, I, I still think this was a great set, though. I think people are going to be very happy to see worms are even in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, at all. Uh, obviously, this seems like more of a history of jank deck, but I think, if anything, this episode helped showcase that this wasn't just a meme. Yeah. That this deck actually had play against what is one of the best decks, uh, if not the best deck and of this current format. And looking at the other matchups as well, I mean, if this is going toe to toe with this deck, going up against other stuff like Blackwing, X Saber, mm -hmm. Gravekeeper, I think you could have held its own. Uh, I can just tell you the side deck, it has two specific game plans, and they are very clearly against Tengu Plant and Six Samurai. And uh, I boarded into like five or six cards here. Outside of that, the deck can't beat anything else. It's 100% a oh. meta call. Uh, it lost its top 16 match to Gladiator Beast. Like, that's uh. that's just the way it is. <laughs> and sometimes how it goes with the matchups. Yep. I will say with my side deck, I really didn't have much to board against you. Mm -hmm. I considered this board specifically, actually, its side deck plan was to go heavy for the mirror match. Yep. It was playing triple Banisher of the Radiance, oh. triple DD Warrior Lady, triple uh, like Fossil Dina. And yeah, like that seems pretty brutal. And, but against like this deck, Banisher's like, okay. Cause I guess like the Yagun gets banished, but Zex can hit over it. So it's not like that good. DD Warrior Lady would still flip the Yagun face up. So none of those cards particularly line up well against this deck. And aside from that, you just have stuff like Bottomless, which I did side in as you saw. 
and uh, I think I had some deep prisons, and there was uh, a malevolent catastrophe I was hoping to get you with, but unfortunately, Gosh. I did not draw it. Oh, I, I gotta tell you, boy, now that there's no heavy storm in the format, does it feel good to set five? Oh. Format feels completely different, but this has been fun. Uh, I can't wait to see how Tengu's gonna continue to impact the format because this was just like the first wave, right? Yeah. Obviously, Tengu was a natural inclusion in this deck. We got to see These some Gen X Ally Birdman stuff loose. as well. This is week one Tengu. Yes, week one Tengu, but also other decks start taking advantage of Tengu as well. So who knows? Maybe next episode, we'll do more of a Tengu showcase to show yeah. some of the other decks that we're incorporating. I think that'd be fun. That would be fun. Do you uh do you want to do the game three? If you want, yeah, yeah let's do, do it. Let's go. Uh guess I'm gonna go first then, since we're doing a game three. Uh for all the good it'll do me. Uh I've I guess I won one, lost one, so maybe going first one more time. Maybe it'll be okay. But now we're out of the sideboard. I guess you don't have as many options against me. I don't know. We'll see. Here's hoping. Jesus, oh, that's wow. okay. That that helps it a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and go to main one. I am going to start by setting one and setting one. Go ahead. I can't draw the knock before the uh, the board game, so let's go for the uh, MST here. You motherfucker! How have you done this three fucking times? I'm just good, baby. I'm just good. Guess what's happening okay. next? Zex. <laughs> here we go. Oh, perfect. Show me the Valor. I have Valor for hey, this. Hey, let's yeah. go. All right. All right. Uh, duality. Perfect. Shit, oh, I don't want perfect. any of that. <laughs> <laughs> These are the three best cards you could have gotten. <laughs> uh, okay, let's make sure to shuffle that one pretty hard. At least it wasn't Worm King, Worm King, Ananta. All right, what's that set card? It's a dandy, sure. It is a Raikou, actually. No, that's, how are you still playing Raikou? I didn't, see I didn't even get to games. tell you. I didn't get to tell you the part about Raikou. I'll tell you about that later. Go for it. <laughs> uh, you can oh, yeah, got a mill three. Excuse me. I forgot that's part of the effect here. Uh, great. Oh, oh fuck. God. I wanted... Actually, Book of Moon, I didn't care about losing. Everything else, I cared about losing. <laughs> Double back row. I know you have Kataro Sahan, however the hell you pronounce that card's name. Okay. Main one. Yeah, this may be the only chance I get to do this, so I kind of want to. I'm going to normal summon Junk Synchron. Our game threes are so scum. <laughs> yeah, go for it, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to target Raiko. Is that fine? <laughs> You know what? I think it's okay. Okay. And I'm going to summon a card you are not prepared for in the slightest. Meet Frozen Fitzgerald. <laughs> if this card... This is... It's this is Armades when it attacks, but then it can also come back if it's killed by battle specifically. <laughs> yeah, let's just uh, let's just shortcut this. Oh, you're no fun. Whatever. All right, he's gone. Well, that was, that was the fun of my turn, I guess. I will just pass. Go ahead. <laughs> It could be anything. Could be anything. Oh, no heavy? You got it. All right. We'll draw. God. All right. I'm in a normal Tengu. Fuck. That is really bad for me. I'm gonna what is Kataros' that. defense? Oh, doesn't matter. All right. He's going anyway. <laughs> Uh, good thing I have Monster Reborn to bring him back. I am going to shit. Yep. <laughs> You're not going to shit now. Uh, you're going to shit when I use Birdman to bring Tengu back to hand. Oh, my fucking God. Yep. Is that fine? <laughs> oh, you know what? It actually is okay. Yeah. This is like, this is fucking crazy that you can do okay. this. Uh, well, hold up, hold up. At res, I'm oh, going okay. to... You have, I imagine you have something here. Thank okay. God I have something. I'm going to fucking Book of Moon your Birdman. Okay, sure. That's understandable. What's Kataros' defense? 500. 500. Okay, so I can hit it. Uh, the issue is you're still going to get Zex, and that still sucks for me. I feel like that's better than you having the monster, though, so go ahead. All right, let's go get Zex. I will pass the turn. Anytime. There we go. All right, uh, normal Zex, trigger the effects. Go for it. Oh, thank God. Uh, okay, set one. Combat. You we'll just walk in, I guess. Sad. Yep. Got him. Ooh, goodbye. Oh, he's banished. Correct. <laughs> he did use the effect. That's the first time I think. Well, actually, you used the effect, but you won the game that turn, so it didn't matter. Okay. Uh, main one. Now, the issue with Zex is that I can't actually kill it. I have a play, but it's not particularly good. Okay. Uh, I am going to MST blindly. Uh, let's see which one I want to go for. You set the newest one because you drew it for turn. I'm going to target that one. There it is, buddy. 
It's not even good. Tengu you, goes you ahead. It's not even copy. good. That's why I was hoping it was meteorite. All right, Tengu trigger. They're just all in my hand at this point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what? I'm going to pop this one. You're going to normal two others. I'm going to go ahead and bring out a card trooper. Wow, that's miserable. The two cards in your hand are Tengu. That's so funny. It is. Uh, let's go to battle. Try to hit. I'll take 100. And can't get over Yagen, unfortunately. So, uh... Pfft. Actually, what am I doing? Hit the hit the fucking Yagen. <laughs> I don't know why I'm hitting the Zex. I was like, yeah, this card's cracked, buddy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, goodbye. And I will just I will just pass on that. I got All nothing right. else going on. Go ahead and resolve your meteorite. Don't mind if I do. All right. Uh, I will draw for turn. Should have grabbed that Worm King off the duality, buddy. I guess I should have. Uh, let's bring him out. Uh, okay. We'll go. Zex into the card trooper. So this will be 14 that I'm taking, drawing a card. Dark hole's already in the grave, so I don't know what I want. Uh, we're going to the Tango. And this sucks, because you know my entire hand. <laughs> yep. Go ahead. Two back row. Oh, fantastic. Great. That's probably the best draw on my deck at this point. <laughs> I guess I will pass after setting. Go ahead. <laughs> Stand by main. What if I just pop the set card? What happens? What what could you have that's crazy? Tengu. <laughs> I mean, obviously Raikou would be nuts, but I think it's more likely you're just bluffing Tengus. It was Plague Spreader Zombie. I was really hoping you would try for it. Take the 27. I do have Gore, so go ahead and oppression me. Uh, I don't have oppression. Uh, I got Solemn, though. That uh, just is annoying, sure. Wow, so your hand is Tengu Tengu? Uh, good luck. It's fun time, isn't it? Uh, I'll draw into three back row on top of it. It's great. How do I out this stupid thing? Uh, I will normal summon Tengu. Yeah. I will activate Plague Spreader Zombie, putting a card on the top of my deck. Okay. Could be anything. Oh, that's uh, sick. It's kind of cool. That's uh, cracked. It doesn't matter because it's just going to die to whatever you've got, but I will bring out a Brio. Yeah, that's that's uh that's fine. Trigger the Tengu. Yeah. Yo, that's, that's Oh look, it was there the whole time. <laughs> Who could have expected? Uh I will attempt to activate Brio to bounce Worm King to your hand. I need this card, dude. <laughs> sure. Oh no. There we go. Uh battle. I will hit. I have a dimension prison. Fantastic. That's exactly what I was expecting. Uh I'm dead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're dead. I might as well be dead at this point. Okay, what is that? A hundred? Sure. An entire hundred. Go ahead. But you didn't want a tribute summon for the Worm King? You can do it with one tribute. That's true. Wait, that's actually true. <laughs> Go. How do I still not have lethal? Uh, I'm going to flip summon Carteros. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go grab a Zex, I guess. Uh, We'll go for the Worm King here. Yep. Uh, what are the sh chances that it's dandy? A hundred? Yeah, let's just pop this. This time you fucking pop it. It's spy. Yeah, let's go. 27. There's no way I'm getting out of this. There's no way I'm getting out of this. Go ahead. Uh, Zex effect. Sure. Yeah, let's just go king. I'm going to pitch king. <sighs> Good game, buddy. Hey. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> Worms. Wow. That one, that like was, that didn't even feel close. That, that, that was time. a little Holy interesting. Shit. Yeah, that one was just a slaughter. Wow. Not the 3-0. Oh, I'm st I deserve to stay in the shirt of shame after this one. Jeez. I thought I was Christ. taking a fat L. Uh, I was staring <laughs> at like seven tools of the bandit that whole game. Like, oh my fucking God. Why are we playing? Unbelievable. This? It just matches up so well. Like the fact that Zex is 18 and Yagen is also 18 kind of checks Tengu, you know? <laughs> that's, that's the idea. Oh man. Yep. Um... So against a lot of fairer decks, um, Tengu ends up being three monsters, which trades for three removal spells. But against decks whose main line of monsters end up outclassing uh, Tengu, of which there are a couple, it just ends up being a combo piece for Synchro plays. And like yeah. Plant Synchro kind of tries to toe the line there. Like obviously the deck historically has been a really powerful advantage engine, just looping Black Rose uh, in order to... Um, kind of uh, grind out like uh, decks um, but also it has these like huge combo turns enabled by like Brio and Lone Fires and shit too so um, 
uh, kind of trying to have its cake and eat it too. And I think as it becomes more streamlined with a like more specific plan of attack against a more solved metagame, it's going to really start going over the top. But for the time being, it just cannot defeat tier zero super threat worms. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's go ahead and shout the patrons as always. So big shouts to Shout1317, Moto Cameron Smith, Chaotic Meatball, Tim 0 x 3 Ika Iron Fang, Ian Musa, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man Hoban, Secro Guy, Ole, Mystic Walk, Silby Wild, Striconic, Useless Assassin 05, Colt T, Rock Slide, Dolly Wop, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Jordan Coons, Kelvin, Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, True Nerdgasm, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Nehru Celeste, David Lee, Rockley 325, Chat God, Silent Agent 216, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, John Two Base, Brody Eastwood, Dace, Zero Elias Panero, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Give Me Speed Raider, Give Me Death, Ashlyn Jensen, TC Gaming, Thanks for the Sleeves Dad, Hots for Gage, Matthew Brady, Dr. Solace, Max, Tom Russell, Gage Just Play Watts already, Chipotle Rice, Eric Grems, Wayan, MBT, I'm pregnant and you're the father. <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. I I didn't know what was in that worm zussy. No, no, no. Hold on. <laughs> Talk dirty to me, MBT. MBT is so sniffer. Stop. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time. <laughs>